is actually much better if they're a little bit bigger. So even though everybody thinks that we should look a certain way, that doesn't mean that that's the healthy way. So we want to make sure that kids grow from the time that they're really young, and then we set them up for a better adult life. I've noticed everybody here has got their lips closed, breathing through their nose. Awesome! <laughs> See, I'm already starting my detective. <laughs> detective work. Okay, so without ado, we'll start and kind of make this a bit fun, okay? We'll go a bit quicker and we're going to do some things together, okay? Okay, so that's our, des that's our designation set. Okay, who are we? Um, we can be a malfunctional therapist or oral facial myologists are dentists, hygienists, medical doctors, physical therapists, orthodontists. Um, more and more orthodontists are getting on board with this. They are looking at the growth, they're changing. So I work with very airway focused orthodontists. They do not want to extract molars, they do not want to extract teeth at all possible. They want to grow in the right way and they're gonna start treatment at age, as early as age like three or four with um, myo munchies or some other types of devices, which I'll go over a little bit later, okay? They're gonna start doing these things that we talked about earlier, okay? What we do? We work with all these different things here. We treat improper, oral muscle function or mouth function, which can start at a very young age, even as, as young as being babies. Uh, train muscles to work together in harmony. Okay? So this girl here, she's sucking her thumb. Does anybody know someone who sucks their thumb? Yeah? Or they grab their, they go like this. <laughs> their coat, right? All the time. It Once in a while is okay, um, but not thumb sucking. Um, we are looking at the wide arches, like Omar saying. We Tongue goes up to the roof of your mouth. Can you say the letter N, everybody? N. Do you notice your tongue is behind your teeth, not touching? On the top, N. Now close your lips. Keep your tongue there. Breathe through your nose. Teeth slightly touching. Do you feel like that's work? Do you feel like, oh my goodness, I have to work to remember to do that. That is correct oral rest posture. Tongue to spot, where you say letter N, we call it the spot. N. Light suction, lips closed. So this is how it develops nice white arches. Oh, this is a touch screen. <laughs> so if your tongue is hanging low, like Omar was saying, mouth breathing. So if you're a teacher here and your kids are like this in class, they look like they're not listening. They're just breathing. You could ask them to close their mouth so their arches don't look like this, okay? Now, if they can't breathe through their nose, that's a problem, right? So a quick test you can do at home, you give your kids, if they, they're like three and over, okay, a little bit of water and say, hold the water in your mouth. I want to test if you can breathe through your nose. And if they can't, if they need to spit it out, if they can't do it for, like they're under five, if they can't do it for about a minute or two, there's a problem, inflammation. There's a problem with their nose. Adenoids, maybe some inflammation with allergies, okay? So you need to get that checked out with your medical doctor, okay? So that's a quick test. Um, this is one of my patients, that's, uh, that's George. Um, you can see where he started. He had, oh goodness gracious, this is a crazy. You see where his chin was? And then, then the overlay here, that's where his chin is now. So we grew him in the right way, okay? His aunties are dentists that I work with. <laughs> this is um, a tongue tie. Sometimes tongues are too short. Now some people say, oh, I don't have a tongue tie. I can lick an ice cream. No, that we, we do elevation, okay? So when we had her tongue tie released, I, I, pray, I prep her for tongue tie release, give her exercises, then an oral surgeon does that. So I work with ENTs, oral surgeons, and orthodontists, medical doctors, many different people. I write letters, show them what we're doing. And this is her after, okay? Now, why do we want this tongue tie released? So she can get her tongue in the roof of her mouth like Evelyn's husband, right? Because if she's tethered, it's like tying your shoelaces together, run a marathon, can you get there? You sure can, but it takes you a long time, you might trip or fall. Untangle the, two, the shoelaces, you can move it, so your tongue can move around. So if you have a tongue tie like this, your kid, sometimes they chew, they take a long time to eat, a long time to eat, 
or they're fast eaters, or they choke and gag on food. So we do, uh, we, when we do our assessments, we use food in our assessments. So we make them eat in front of us, and we video them. And then crowded teeth. So this is, this is from the muscles messing up the teeth. When there's a war between muscle and bone, muscle will always win. Muscle's strong. Bone just goes, okay, I'll go over here. Okay, I'll go over here. So this person here, I can already tell they're using too much lip and chin muscles to swallow. They swallow like this. Form follows function. Can you guys say that? Form follows function. Again, form follows function. So if you had one leg shorter than the other and you were walking like this, your spine would go crooked, right? You put a lift in your shoe, you walk straight, spine is straight. This is the same thing. Form follows function. What does a healthy child smell look like? I had trouble finding a really good picture. <laughs> because people that send me patients don't have this yet. So we want teeth spaced out like this, okay? We want the teeth slightly overlapping like this. We want to see just a little bit of gum on the top. We want to see the teeth straight, not tilted in and not out. And some spaces. And some spaces, yeah, <clears throat> like, like pumpkin teeth, like spaces. This kid here, do you see the gummy smile? Mm -hmm. What else do you see? No spaces. No. Closed together. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents say, my kid had a most beautiful smile when they were babies. All the teeth were together. Like, oh, <laughs> it's not beautiful. It's, you can see what's going to happen. The big adult teeth come in, and you're going to have crowding, right? Okay. okay, so. I notice where the tongue is. Yeah. So tongue? That could just be one of the pictures, but Maybe. yeah, the tongue is the tongue is uh, the tongue is not the right spot. So correct. jaws growing collected right on right on. Crowded smile, upper gums showing teeth tight together, low tongue posture, jaws growing. How we help? What we teach? So we want to breathe through your nose one hundred percent of the time. <laughs> Train the tongue to rest on the roof of your mouth. Say the letter N. N. Swallow correctly, don't move the face. Can everybody have, get a little spit in your mouth right now? Bring tongue to spot, say N. N. Bite together. Now try to, smile, try to swallow with a smile. Was it hard? Yeah? Yeah? So you try to swallow with n moving no face muscles. Quiet face swallows. Form follows function. Busy on the inside with the tongue, quiet on the outside. <laughs> All right, so Evelyn has a diagram here. So we're going to look at the tongue posture. So swallowing correctly to uh, don't move the face. She's going to show you what the tongue should sit and the mouth model. So on here, you can, when you say the letter N, you can feel a little bump right behind those front two teeth. So we want to put the tip of our tongue on that little bump, and then we want to just gently suction the tongue up to the top of our mouth. And that's where we want it to sit. Not just the tip, we want most of the tongue at the top of the mouth. And then we close our mouth, but we close our teeth not totally together. We have just a little gap between the top and the bottom teeth. And then we always close our lips. So when we have all of that going on, then the muscles in our cheeks are nice and soft. They're not stressed. And so then we can hold that position through the day. And when we ever, whenever we need to swallow or spit, we just, our tongue just does the work. It doesn't, we don't need to like use all of our facial muscles to swallow. So you can see here, the tongue is at the roof of the mouth, so it will wave backwards. So how we teach, how we help. <clears throat> We're gonna chew hard, healthy foods and chew like you mean it. So when you take a bite of a cracker or pretzels, you had some diagrams of some hard foods? Yeah. So we've got some examples here. Yeah. So, some, so pretzels are a really nice treat because they're, well, there's probably a little bit of sugar in there, but they're nice and hard. You have to really kind of crunch those to eat them. Carrots are a nice treat, and most kids like them, so those are good. Um, we've got lots of nuts that are hard that require a lot of crunching, and I know there's a lot of nut allergies, but Hopefully, 
we don't have those. Um, and then there's apples and, and granola bars. Those are all nice, crunchy treats that, that don't have a lot of sugar in them, but they really make us work for them. Fruits and vegetables, right? Get back to nature. And uh, stand and sit tall. So now we've got tech neck, right? I want you, who, who does this, who texts like this? Like everybody, I want you to bring your phone up to your face like this, okay? Put your ear over your shoulder. Can everybody sit really tall for me? It's nice and tall. <laughs> now look, I want you to look over to your person next to you. Is their ear over their shoulder? Shoulder over their hips? Or are they like this? It's dead arm. <laughs> What's the next draw? Okay. So when you're, <clears throat> you're sitting at the table, you want to bring the food to you. You don't go to the food, okay? Bring food to you. Sit tall, that way you can breathe. Do a little experiment for me. So I want you to take a nice breath in through your nose, out through your nose. Do that a couple times, you're sitting nice and tall. Now fold over, breathe in. Wait, is it harder? Yeah, it's harder, right? Okay, so when these kids can't breathe, you're gonna see some pictures. They're, when I take their posture pictures, they're like this, because they find it easier to breathe like this because they're not used to being upright and tongue to spot. Okay, so it's like back to the 50s. Sit up tall, stand up tall, right? Back, back, back to back to the basics. The other thing I might see when I'm when I when they have trouble breathing is they they're doing this because when you lift your chin up, it also opens that up a little bit. Yeah. So sometimes they're not forward, but they're just. <laughs> so these are the faces that Omar has in the pictures, just a side profile. This is a, a nose breather, healthy face, okay? So the profile, the forehead's in line with the chin, okay? We have alert eyes, straight nose, closed mouth posture, straight chin, and ideal, this is called cervical posture, neck posture is straight, okay? This is from the Breeze Institute. This is from a very well-known ENT doctor from the United States who trains a lot of my um, tongue tie release providers. This is Dr. Shur Zaggy's uh, slide, so give it credit to the Breathe Institute. Um, tired eyes for the mouth breather. The crooked nose might have a bump in their nose. Okay. Um, the open mouth posture, receding chin, forward head posture, and then really flat cheekbones. Who doesn't want good cheekbones, right? Lifts up your face. Okay. What parents can look for? This. If they're sick, for a, a, a few days, this is okay, okay? Like, that's different if you're sick, sick for just a bit. But if, if they're like not sick and they're doing this, when you're nursing your babies, after they're off the rest or the bottle, pinch their lips together. Teach them to close their lips, okay? If they can't, if they pop open, there's something going on with their nose, okay? Uh, this, watching TV or coloring, Tell them close their mouth. Whoops. You know what you could do? You just get a piece of paper and say, honey, put this in your mouth. So they just have to hold a piece of paper in their mouth. And if it falls out, they know they're open in their mouth, right? <laughs> That's easy, right? <coughs> poor, this kid here, what they, you can look for is poor sleep. Their bed sheets are messy. They're, they're all over the place, okay? They're thrashing. They, they might uh, get up to go to the bathroom in the night, okay? Night, uh, night terrors, um, they might be mouth breathing during the day or night, keep leaves closed, bedwetting, they might have kids that are bedwetters or know of kids that are bedwetting, that's a sleep disorder, pro or yep, sleep disorder, pro a breathing problem or tongue tie, okay, um, you'll see a, um, I don't have it in this one, um, I have, yes I do, in this slide I'll show you one of my patients who was a bedwetter at age 10, he never wanted to go to sleepovers and this is before COVID because he'd wet the bed. But when we got his tongue released, he stopped wetting the bed almost immediately. Because it falls back into his throat and it keeps him asleep and he can't wake himself up to go to the bathroom. Fast or slow eating, choking and gagging on fruit or drink, tired during the day, moody, and they're just nasty to you, okay? Or they're hyper. When kids are tired, they get hyper, right? Really, they don't want to listen sometimes. So Evelyn's got some diagrams here. So what can you do? You want to look for sippy cups that have straws, okay? 
something like this. Um, the sippy cups that, that don't have the straws, that have the really big mouthpiece, they tend to keep their lips, they keep their, um, tend to keep their tongues down. But it also, it opens their mouth really wide to do it. When they have to drink through a straw, they're using all those muscles. They're closing everything up. And uh, not enough to cause any lack of growth. It's just training those muscles. So it's better than the one that has... That has the really big... Yeah. 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 Straws are better. Even better than that. So this is only to use when they... You know, when you need something spill proof but if they're at home at the table just a let's just a cup yeah okay. because teaching them how to swallow properly with a, with just a cup is even better than a straw I know parents don't want big mess so these are okay with the little bladder in the middle because it just gives a little bit of liquid but it, they train them to swallow properly uh, soothers Get rid of these don't even start if you don't have to if you have a preemie baby and the NICU needs you to do that that's a suckling reflex that needs to be developed. Follow their advice, okay? By age two, you need to get rid of this, okay? Okay, um, because it's teaching low tongue posture. It's in here, and it's pushing the tongue down. You're not getting your tongue to the palate, okay? There are different things you can do. There's chewlery. So if you've got a kid that puts everything in their mouth, like right? they want something in their mouth, there's something you can buy called chewlery on Amazon. It's medical grade silicone. It's on a necklace that can detach. And you can buy unicorns, Lego, all different shapes, and they can chew on it. Like a teether. Like a teether, but for like older kids. <laughs> so um, if you want to graduate your kids out of a soother, say, you're a big kid now, we're going to do some jewelry, okay? If you do use a soother, um, it's recommended to use one that has the smallest little um, area at the front so that they're keeping their mouths more closed. By the time, this is one of them. Yeah, oh, this is great. The, this is perfect. Few kids, like, yeah, the, they can hunt, yeah. and they can suck on it. That's good for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect. Cool. Yay! You already know. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they use it for some of the kids. Yeah. 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 For That's perfect. Some kids. And then get the thumb out of the mouth. Oh, we specialize in helping you, uh, your kids stop thumb sucking. You can, uh, I have a program. You can see me for an hour. I'll give you some guidance with your kid. Um, sh uh, sometimes the stranger's the expert, right? We're going to go see the special lady going to help us stop sucking our thumb because you're six now, okay? And um, we need to stop doing that. And so sometimes they listen to me, not mom and dad, okay? Right? Because I'm the, I'm the stranger. But I'll, I'll give you like a little idea of what to do. Um, and then you can take that and try it at home. If you're unsuccessful and you're like, oh, then you can help hire me and I'll help you with eliminating thumb sucking. We're trained in thumb sucking removal. How old are they? You can give them the for to start. Age four. Age four? Yeah. For thumb sucking um, training? Yeah. But yeah. what about if it's uh, two and a half? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's some ideas we can give you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, there's some really easy things that you know we've spent a lot of coursework time to learn, and and uh, it's kind of hard to talk about it right in this lecture. But yeah, we can uh, definitely give you some advice, and it, it's very effective, right? Um, it's not just putting yucky fingernail polish on. There's different things we do. Yeah. All right, so we're, I'm gonna talk about Mahela. I've had permission from her parents to show these pictures. Okay, she's one of my patients. So, what do you see? I, I drew a grid here because we look for symmetry when we look at our faces. She looks pretty okay, hey? Well, she's got a missing tooth, but that's normal. She's pretty symmetrical. She's got dark circles under her eyes. She kind of looks tired. Narrow arch. And this is her after photo. This is after treatment about a year later. What's improved? Her eyes look brighter. I mean, it's a bit, a bit of different lighting, right? She's had some adult teeth come in, smiles wider. This will show you a bit more. This is similar to Omar's pictures, right? So see that chin set back? Her front, her top jaw is growing properly. It's growing the right way, but her bottom jaw is being held back by where her tongue is. If her tongue sitting low, it holds the jaw back. It's called low tongue posture. So look, she's got dark circles here, right? 
She's a little bit forward, head forward, right? And then this is her, her after, this is her phase one treatment. <clears throat> so in orthodontics, we have phase one and phase two. Phase one is mostly expansion and growth, and phase two is straightening the teeth. Some orthodontists just want to straighten the teeth. They don't, I don't care what the bone is doing, I just want to straighten teeth. We care about the bone. We want to grow the bone, then worry about the teeth. So the jaw is forward in alignment with the forehead. So see this? See her forehead and here? It's in alignment now, right? Okay. Mid-face development right here. <laughs> She's got cheekbones now. See, she had a flat face. Okay. Well, some people say, oh, she just got a little older. That's only your difference. Uh, lips are in contact. Okay. You see how her lips kind of further back? Because her chin's back. And head is more in line with her shoulder. She's a little bit more upright because we work on posture and breathing training too. Here's my tongue-tie guy. <coughs> he's, uh, he's tethered. What do you see? This, does everybody know what this is? We all have one, right? It's called a lingual frenulum. <laughs> it's a piece of tissue under your tongue. This is before the tongue-tie release. He's a shorter lingual frenulum. Heart-shaped tongue, do you see how right here the, the, the tongue is kind of heart-shaped? Over here. So if you if you have your kids elevate like this, or stick their tongue out and it makes a dip like that, you may have a tongue tie. Okay. And then this is after he had his tongue tie release. No more bed wetting because his tongue is not falling back in his other way. It's allowing him to properly sleep. A lot of times as adults, you'll wake up and go to the bathroom, right? But in kids, when they're in a different phase of sleep and their tongue is falling back, it won't, their, their brain won't wake them up because their body wants to stay asleep. He's actually not having, he's having trouble breathing. His, air, his tongue is falling back in his airway because it's tethered low, right? Okay, this guy, this is Warwick. He, you can see, I, I, I do my picture a bit differently now, but I have the, the crosshair. Do you, what do you see with him? Is he straight? No. Mm -hmm. And crooked. Crooked. Mm -hmm. And crooked. Cute kids, though, hey? Cute. Do you see his, his, his ear height? A little bit different? Bags under his eyes. A little bit of bags under his eyes, to under it. It's kind of shifted, right? It's like his jaw is sideways, right? So what was Warwick's treatment? We put him some, my dentist puts him in appliances that expand his palate while he's growing. They're removable, so he can clean his teeth properly, but the kid has to want to wear them and not lose them at lunchtime because they're about $300 in appliance, okay? Mm -hmm. And he had an upper one and a lower one. So it would help expand his jaw lower, like this, and his upper jaw this way. And then I would train his tongue to sit in the roof of the mouth, Swallow correctly, do all the right things to help grow forward and wide. Okay? He grew his hair. I should have had his hair back. So after, I'll show you what happened inside. So now you can see the teeth are coming in. He's a little bit more straighter, right? Now this is what was happening on the inside. Okay? This is our world. We look at teeth all day. Before my, oh, do you see this? This is called a crossbite. This happens with uh, thumb sucking and soother use. It can, okay? Um, he actually had a hidden tooth up here, an extra tooth, so he had to have that surgically removed, okay? So uh, this is his palate. Do you see this? That's where his tongue was resting because form follows function. So that's where his tongue's resting. It doesn't take a rocket science to see that, right? That's easy. It's right there. But he needed his tongue here, and he needed to get all the blade of his tongue up, right? He only had a little bit like the tip sitting there. And then after, he had expansion. So this was September, this is two years later. <coughs> he still got a, a rotate lateral, that's okay. We'll let the orthodontist deal with that. I don't care about that right now. But he's less in crossbite, but he's growing forward, okay? And look at his palate now. Look how wide that is. Do you see how this has changed? So what can you do? You consult with your child's medical doctor to ensure no breathing issues with the nose, okay? They're generally healthy. Check their iron levels. Messy bed sheets can be because they have low iron. 
restless sleep. Who, who co-sleeps with their kids? If, yeah, I did too. And they like kicking you and they're all over the place and you're like, ah, get out. They might have low iron because they're thrashing or they're having trouble breathing because they're not getting into deep sleep. Uh, consult with your mouth muscle therapist or your myofunctional therapist. And um, sometimes dental plans can cover our, our fees, and sometimes they don't. Uh, many offices will have payment plans to help, but we can help you understand what's covered with your plans by giving you codes, and you can research that, or I can have my team research that for you, okay? But even if you don't have cons coverage, consider investing in myofunctional therapy. I am doing group sessions. I'm starting to do that with families. So if you've got like three kids, four kids, you're like, oh my gosh, I just need everybody to know about this, I'll do group sessions. So that makes it easier on the pocketbook. I just need to get the word out there and, and learn a few exercises. And then if you guys need to have more specialized treatment, we can fine tune that for them, right? Um, portion of your myofunctional therapy fees that Evelyn and I would be um, gaining will go back to Omar's organization to do his good work to continue doing uh, the sessions here and we would support that organization so a donation from us for those who come so we'd like to thank you and let's uh, grow right together Questions or are we going to do a draw? Yeah, we're going to do a draw. So, yeah. so she'll get that. Any questions while she's getting the draw there? I have cards in the back you can grab. Uh, I have them here. We have cards and flyers. Yeah. So here. It has both of our information. Yeah. yeah. So you guys can take that. So you don't have to memorize all this. A lot of it's in the flyers. And you go to my website, thedrawgym.com, and there's uh, some information on there too. You had a question? Yeah. So, uh, uh, about the sleep cycle, no snoring, but uh, the night time, like, sometimes it's chalk and pop in mm -hmm. the middle of the night. Yeah. So what kind of... Uh, While wearing a CPAP? Yeah. Yeah? No, no sleep. Oh, Just, like, choking no and coughing? That's that's a problem. So what's not in that? Like, uh, the, the tongue is falling back in the airway, mm -hmm. and the airway is collapsing. So I help train muscles in the throat yeah. and uh, the, the tongue to get more fit. <laughs> the drying for the, the drying for mouth is because the mouth is open. <laughs> the mouth. Yeah. But there's medications that can cause dry mouth too. And so that's something you can work with uh, your mouth functional therapist and your mouth is dry throat. Yeah. The throat's dry because mouth breathing. That's why. Yeah. yeah. There could be there could be other things going on, but it might be like something to look at with medical doctor too. But usually, if you have a dry throat or dry mouth when you wake up, um, we notice as hygienists, if people are mouth breathing, you have more tartar buildup on your teeth. The heck here? And her teeth are fine, but not perfect. But she still sleeps with her mouth open. And, you know, yeah. she has, a, like, she doesn't snore as much because she did a, a cover uh, or shame. Uh, she had, like, a nasal procedure. Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah, and I think she still sleeps with her mom. Uh, no, she See if she can hold water in the mouth for three minutes comfortably. If she's like, I have to swallow, like, I can't. Get out. So, getting her tongue more fit, have her come see me. Yeah. 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 She's got a whole life ahead of her. Yeah, nasal breathing's better for your airway and your development and longevity for your... I will. Yeah, Alzheimer's and dementia is highly linked to mouth breathing and sleep disorder and everything. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another few draws later on, but now you could have a snack and then Mr. Haymoor has something to say after. While you're eating, maybe talk. So please, Fadalou, start... Uh,
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll leave it in the house and then I'll make her cry.